Welcome to our video about ground handling. Basic. We will go through everything from safe locations, gears, and the different types of exercise I like to use. Firstly, I'd like to express my gratitude to those who provided the suggestions for the content of this video. Let's begin by discussing the suitable area. For beginners, it's essential to have access to a spacious open area, preferably with some incline. You'll want a steady, unobstructed wind flow, ideally originating from the coast or water. Initially, the wind speed shouldn't exceed 5 meters per second, and it's helpful to have a companion who can offer some assistance. The companion should position themselves downwind from you to ensure you're pulled in their direction in case of mishaps. It's worth mentioning that certain exercises may require winds stronger than 5 meters per second and should be approached gradually as you gain confidence. Alright, so during ground handling session, like the proper safety gear you need to have, something good to protect your hands from the lines, you will need a helmet <laughs> to protect your head. <laughs> In this video we use the ultralight harness, but as a beginner I would recommend a harness with, uh, with foam for more protection. You want to have high shoes with angle protection. For glider it's beneficial with a smaller glider. I use a ground handling wing from BGD, but this I will talk more about later in the video. As a beginner, it's very easy to be too stiff on the legs. If you're too stiff on the legs, you have no energy to, when you pull up the glider, you're too static, you have nothing to release energy with, because you're already in a stand-up position, which will often just pluck you, pluck you off the ground. So there's two things. To can, that can prevent you from getting plucked. It's either legs down or if you have a steep takeoff, the steeper it is, the more energy you will take off going uphill. Let's try and do a takeoff with stiff, stiff legs. <laughs> so you see here, you can see with the stiff leg, she gets pulled. So as a human being, when you lose control, it's very easy to, to grab whatever you have in your hands. This will, <laughs> you think it will provide you safety, but in paragliding what you have in your hands is your brakes. Pulling the brakes will immediately put the glider in the power zone, getting you dragged. I know this is a bit scary for you, but now you're gonna try, turn around and put too much brake on. Okay, so you see she gets dragged, immediately up with your hands. Up with your hands. Up with your hands. Perfect. Okay, face the glider safely. Kill it. Nice, good job. That's a good job. Always have a goal. So now Christina is trying to get further behind. Because if you have a goal where you want to go with your glider, it's so much easier because you are giving the inputs to the glider or vice versa if you don't have a goal. You're just standing there and the wind will <laughs> correct you and you have to do the counter input. Chapter two, the starting grip. So in this chapter, we will go through the ideal setup for ground handling and takeoff as well. We will go through a technique that's really good for, for not taking off with cross blinds, but it can happen. You have a circle on the brakes around the riser or something. This will ensure that you never have it. Let's start with this, the standard grip. You have already done your line check, you know they're good, but to prevent you taking off with twists on the brake lines, this is a perfect, perfect little trick. Okay, so you start with your upper riser. You start from the carabiner. You follow with your hand down to the brake handle. You pull it, you take it out to the side. And now you see you have nothing between your hands, down to the pulley, up to the carabiner. You know it's good. 
in the, in the hand. We start from the car carabiner with the opposite hand. Follow the riser. You take the handle, pull it out. Same, same here. You have no entanglement. Nothing between your riser. Ah, perfect. You're now ready for takeoff. I advise you to have the brake handles just in safe for safety. Okay. I just pull them on that on my on my wrist so I know where, where I got them. All right. Now we're gonna try an exercise that uh, Christina has not performed yet, but it's it's a very good exercise to be able to 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 learn how the the glider moves and. And the exercise is just, we're gonna, she's gonna make her eyes on a point. She's gonna move towards the point. And without using brakes, she should only use the ace. The brakes are still in the hand, but she should only use ace and movement to ahead or back. So it's, it's a mix between A lines and movement of legs. And also, you would not, you, you don't want the glider to come all the way up, like this is perfect. Like this, yes, and then you have the glider perfect in this position. You, you see my hands? Brake handles ready. Okay, I want to get the glider up, not that far up as I'm ready to launch. I'm just going to get it up and move towards it. I make myself a point in this direction where I want to go. Ideally, on the non turbulent days, like if you're on the coast, for example, you have steady wind from the from the ocean pushing in, it's perfect. Like this hand kiting technique, just to stable, get stable, not let it go all the way up. Okay. So this exercise, it's just to, to give you better glider control and also get you comfortable about, yeah, just getting the glider back down. So you abort the, the takeoff. You see I have I have a hand kiting grip. So I have both ace in one hand. I have ba both back riser in one. You can see my brake handles are on my wrist so I'm ready to take off. And abort. Go up. Stop it. Also pay attention to my legs. My footwork. I'm bent in the knees and move towards the glider. This exercise is good for low to medium wind. This exercise I use if I'm if I'm moving a lot up on takeoff, on a hike and fly, and and there's not a proper takeoff area. I will use this. Uh, you see, I never let go of my ace, and I can put the glider in a in a kiting position like this. You cannot pick a point where you want to go. You keep the glider here. And I I use the brake on the upper side, just as in, in a Cobra launch. Just adjusting, adjusting, small adjustments. So again, you pick a point, you're bent in the knees, and it's a fine line, just adjusting with your brake handles once the, once the glider is in kiting position. And watch as I turn, you'll see my left hip against the glider, so you always have the hip closest to the glider a bit higher than the other hip. Here comes the turn again, watch, while you're still just balancing the glider with small small brake inputs. This gives really good glider control. Right, let's move over to exercise number five, wingtip to wingtip. It's 
pretty much the same as the kiting one, except here he will stay in one position. So you touch the ground with the wingtip. Here you can see I'm compensating for a little wind with holding the ace in my hand. Ideally, you want to do this exercise in medium to strong wind and then you can be able to only use the brakes. So it's a balance between legs, hips and brake. This gives a really good knowledge of how the glider behaves. So this is also a good, good exercise. Just put yourself forward, forward. Make sure you're aware of your surroundings. You're not gonna be dragged into anything. Just kind of feel the glider. Put yourself in a natural launching position. Body up a bit ahead. Just practice just feeling the glider. You don't have to look at it. Just feel it where it is. And it's a combination between small adjustment on the brake and your legs. So now it's going this way. I want to apply the brake on the opposite side and move towards the center of the glider. Okay. And again, this is one of those exercises where, especially in the beginning, you want to be two people because it's very, you know, it's it's one thing to know the theoretical background of the different exercises, but to actually apply them when you are are out, when you start to lose control, it's very fast to just forget everything you thought you knew. You pull on the brakes. You start getting dragged, and if you have a helper, put him in line with the wind. You know, if your helper is over on this side, he will have to start running. Instead of he's just waiting to catch you when, <laughs> when the wind drags him this, in, your, in this direction. Cobra is an exercise that can be useful to practice, although at the PP2 stage, flying in conditions requiring Cobra should not be attempted. Positioning is important when performing the Cobra. Place the wing across the wind direction. Stand straight at slightly over 90 degrees from the wind direction. Then it's, it's balance between your brake. Okay, like this, pop it up, a little bit of brake. Start by pulling the A and the brake on the top when you are in Cobra and you're ready to get it over your head, give a little bit more input to the brake while starting to move beneath the center of the wing. Alright, so this is an exercise. Ideally, when you ground out, you should be two people. And the reason for this is that when you ground handle, your exercises should be so so demanding of you. So, so you, you shouldn't have the fitness to just standing alone hours and hours and hours then it's much better put your spotter off so I have the pilot the wind is coming this direction so if she gets dragged I don't have to chase her because she will get dragged into me and another thing we're gonna show is if you're not comfortable if the if the wind is picked up so much you're not comfortable getting it down practice this exercise so you have your spotter which wind tip do you want to give me this one okay the pilots get the wing tip down I take it and I run towards the pilot okay we're gonna talk about another another way of killing the glider you want to take your ace this is for if it's a lot of wind and you're alone. So you, you use the ace to kill the glider. Immediately when you pull the ace, the, the front will come in. You take the back risers and you run towards the glider. 
and when it's down, you can put your body on top of it so it's safe. Okay, Christina, when you're ready, you can uh, show off. <laughs> Perfect. Third me method, not something I use a lot, but with the use of, of quick carabiners. If you have quick carabiners, you're ready to go. You can release them. Simple. All right, next exercise without using the ace to kill the glider. The only thing you should do, you should go for both back risers, run towards the glider and pull them at the same time. Once you start to lose control, immediately turn around in backward position and go for your back risers. In the next clip here, you will see me getting dragged. It's quite a lot of wind this day, on this day. And immediately, when I start to get dragged, I will go for my back riser. Only one side, it doesn't matter which one, and just start wrapping it in. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we were going to talk about this glider. It's the BGD Seed, and right now you can get a good discount uh, by using the, the code. I'll leave it down in the description. So I hope you got some inspiration to go out, do some ground handling, maybe you learned something new. If you like this type of videos, give a thumbs up, subscribe.